In this video, we're going to look at a really cool uh, part of game theory where we take our normal form games and we repeat them. So this is a very simple game. It's actually the battle of the sexes. Um, and so we know that there are two pure Nash equilibria and one mixed Nash equilibria. Now, we're going to call this a stage game. And we're going to repeat this stage game multiple times. And what we see here is a plot of all the utilities we can get if we were to repeat this game twice. So for example, you see 6, 4 there. That would happen if this outcome happened twice. So twice in a row, both players, the row player played this twice in a row, and the column player played this twice in a row. Now, when we consider repeated games, we are allowed to remember the entire history of the repeated game. So if two players are playing, one player knows um, if they are at the point of repeating the stage game for the 50th time, one player knows exactly what the other player played for the 49 times before that. So when we say a strategy in a repeated game, it, we have to keep that into account. So one strategy could be always play R1. So that's, that's a very basic strategy, just always play R1. You don't really make use of the history. Another strategy could be play R2 until your opponent plays S1. And then as soon as he plays S1, you, uh, you play R1 throughout. So both of those are valid strategies in repeated games. And as such, sometimes in repeated games, you have to use uh, prose to describe strategies. And now here's a result that might seem obvious. Um, for any repeated game, any sequence of stage Nash profiles, so a Nash equilibrium for the stage game, if, we, if the players just played that constantly, um, gives the outcome of a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. So remember, we talked about subgame perfection before. The proof of this is uh, relatively straightforward. First of all, we have to prove that a sequence of stage Nash profiles would be a Nash equilibrium, and then that it would be a Nash equilibrium for every, every subgame. The first part is relatively easy. You just use backwards induction. The last, um, the last nodes on the tree would would be a stage uh, game, so obviously it's an abstract equilibrium for the stage game, and no, no player has a reason to deviate, and you can take all that way, that way, all the way back to the root of the tree. To prove that it's a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, well, if you just consider the fact that what you have, so I've got dot 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 there, I just haven't drawn all of these, you've just got these repeat, uh, these repetitions, almost in a fractalian way of subgames, and if you consider the last subgame once again then uh, in an inductive way, the result halts. 